Perspective, sir. What does you think it stands for? Uh, I cannot give you a perspective that will be different from the architect of the United Progressive Party. I will only give you a perspective on why I joined the party. Okay, sir. I joined the party because among all the parties that are in our political feel today. It seems to be a better articulated party. It has some intellectual content and politics being group activity. I felt that is a platform that can achieve what my constituency will have in mind. One, the cardinal program of the party is that it centers on how to run a balanced federal system of government. It talks about how do you restructure this country into a working democracy. It talks about the need for people in Nigeria to determine their existence or association within the Nigerian state. And it gives an opportunity that you cannot leave the major public sector in the hands of the private people. And it talks about how you can create political power back to the grassroots. Because right now the parties we have are purely federal parties. They have this unitary party. Every power is in the center. And it gives me an opportunity that as Onyibo, that we can sit down because politics is about conspiracy, politics is about interest, that we can formulate a platform that can give Igbo opportunity to dominate their environment and assert ourselves, not to dominate others, but to dominate our environment. It gives us a home base, it gives us an opportunity that because Nigeria as it stands today is still not yet one country, everybody is not pursuing the same ideas. And I look at the enterprise nature of the party, that it gives an opportunity that the Igbos must learn how to engage other Nigerians. So that's one of the principal attractions I had in the party. And then uh, I can see that the party is rank or free. Uh, there is order in that party. And um, the leader of the party had a vision. And I, I cannot see any other person in Igbo land on our political landscape that has the credential of uh, Dr. Chekwas Okori. With all due respect, I've been in politics. I'm a political careerist. Uh, he's a bureaucrat. He's been able to organize people and make sacrifice. So I felt that I could work with him. And then 
one of the greatest attributes in leadership is to build other leaders. Wow. Interesting. So you think Chekwasi Okori, Dr. Chekwasi Okori is on the right course, sir? Oh, he's the prefect of his class. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't suffer fools. I don't praise people because I'm also an intellectual giant. I recognize him for his qualities okay. and I'm ready to work with him. <laughs> yeah, he's my leader. I concede how he's been able to bring aboard the platform of Igbo agenda in Nigeria politics. Mm -hmm. I have respect for him. Well sir, I I am in possession of this your booklet. It says Ndibo Anambra surrendered the me for the we down to marginalization in Nigeria. And this was marginalization immediately captured my attention. Because Igbos have always cried um, marginalization, marginalization. But may I start with, do you think marginalization is real as it is being preached in the present dispensation of uh, this present government? In Nigeria, the phraseology marginalization is like a glass ceiling. Glass ceiling in the sense that is what the reflection you see. Igbos have very low understanding of group politics. We've not been able to do well in group politics. So, because we usually go into politics for what position we individuals can gain, and we lost focus of the ball. Politics is all about conspiracy for power. And all the indices of power, material, human material, economic uh, material, and then demography and geography are all in our positive concern. Why are we not doing well? Is because we have not been able to understand how power is used. Politics is about group interest, group activity. You go into politics with common agenda, you present your agenda, and you filibuster so that you can negotiate. But we are low rangers. Our politicians have not been able to understand to play like a team. That's why I joined Chepas. Because we must learn how to, it's like football. You must grow the party, you grow the, the team by having wingers, by having defense, and having a goalkeeper. And then you must limit your talent to the scope where you can carry it. If you exercise it too much, you lose control and it will be against your team. So most of our politicians go to negotiate for positions. They don't understand that politics is about group activity, group interest. So that's why we are not doing well. That's why we are thinking about marginalization. Tell me, even with the five states that they have allocated to us, we still occupy a very good space to determine the political agenda of any political party. But our politicians have not been able to get the chemistry right. So that is our witness. And that is one thing I have decided to form a team with Chequas and then we can grow new leaders that will understand that this is about not about you are nearer to the goal, you must be the one that will score. <laughs> you look for the man that is better the place. It's just like if you're running for governor, you just don't run because you want to be governor. You run because you see a talent that you can support. You see somebody who is actually going to give you that type of leadership. Because if you go back to our secondary schools, you don't sit the exam to be senior prefect of, they look at your records. So it's important that people have records. That's why we both are not doing well in politics, but we don't play group game. Well, but then, sir, what do you think we need to do right, to get it right? The greatest issue that is facing Igbos, beginning with Anambra, is how do we identify team to play by team. Look at the present governor in Anambra State. He's all alone. He's the only man, he's the only crow that is crying. He's all alone. Tell me those who are in his government that make things happen. They don't have a team. The secretary to government, where is he? What is he bringing into the government? The commissioners, what are they bringing into the team? So it's just uh, it's our own mentality that produced him. And that is why they, the state is not moving. Because they are not looking for talent. They are not looking for wingers that make the party to move. So that's why 
Anybody coming into politics in this 2017 and beyond must be a team player. We need good men. We have to begin to recognize talents. People who are better than you, don't start going to struggle with them. You put them forward so that we can achieve our goal. It mustn't be me. It mustn't be me. It could be somebody better. Uh, like you said here, changing the me to the we. That is the name of the game. It's not, people are not fighting for industry. They are not fighting for all these things. If we get the team right, everything will be resolved. If we continue playing one-man politics, P2B was there, it was one man. Everybody, as if it was there, it was one man. Who did they build? They have not built other leaders. In Anambra State, they have not been able to hold local government election, so-called, for the last 11 years. And there's no new leaders. It's all recycling all these people who are looking for money to pay school fees. That's not politics. So, uh, if I may quickly add in, sir, you think Igbos are not marginalized, that we are marginalizing ourselves? No, the problem is not that the Igbos are marginalized. The Igbos don't understand politics. Policy. Politics is a group activity. It's not like going to China to become distributor for one brand of champagne. <laughs> no, that is a wrong concept. The chemistry must change. You must go as if you go and play street football match, where you go and look for talent and adopt him in your street. That was the game. Now, let us please pay a visit to the federal level. Um, people are complaining that Nigeria lost focus the day this new government took over the mantle of leadership. So, please, what do you think? Do you think Nigeria is on the right course, or do you think we have missed it somehow, somewhere? Well, I, I wouldn't want to give the APC federal government opportunity to return, because by God's permission, I may be up against whoever they will throw up in Anambra State for the next election, so that I will give them a thorough trashing on their policies. But one thing I will say is that APC came on board with a lot of hope for Nigerians. Uh, they had a very attractive manifesto, but there was no intellectual content. And the minute they started the conspiracy of we are the people who now have power, any other person that did not support us will have to wait for the crumbs. Uh, they lost it. Uh, and uh, President Buhari ran a campaign of he had no money, uh, but uh, he told us he had to borrow money to buy his uh, domination. And then I thought they had an idea where they were going. And the minute he came on board, they personalized the party and brought people who never had idea on the manifesto APC ran on. So that is much I can say because I will be waiting for them in Anambra State. Let them come with their record so that I can smash it. Because there's nothing, APC is empty. It's a party that has no intellectual view. They are fighting corruption, there's no plan. And they don't know that the root of corruption in Nigeria is in the party. And they left the party chasing shadows. I say no more until the time comes. If I become a candidate, uh, they will be unlucky if I become a candidate. <laughs> <laughs> For governorship in Anambra, they will be very unlucky <laughs> because they will expose Buhari and the people in government. Look at what is happening. Secretary of government is being removed. They thought it's a civil servant that they brought into. That is a political office. That is the neck of government. Secretary of Government is the head of cabinet office. That is why they don't know what they are doing. I, will, I don't want to advise the APC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, sir. Well, sir. Um, okay. Away from the political sphere, let us take a look at Nigeria from the economic perspective. Do you think economically, we are getting it right. Nigeria has no economy until we have a political direction. There's no economy. We are just operating what MTN taught us, the pay as you go. 
We used to have an economy, the military from 1970 destroyed Nigerian philosophy of government. Until we have the government right. Nigeria is <laughs> underdeveloped because the capacity for higher productivity is not there. Energies, I'm in my 60s. Uh, it's not my highest potential that I'm. My engine is running at 10% uh, output. And so is so many other Nigerians. Dreams are being killed because of the type of government we are on. Until we go back to restructure this country so that those who have excellent potentials can create surplus uh, production so that others can benefit. And that's why the whole country is on a standstill. We are not moving. Interestingly, you said, you mentioned restructuring. And uh, when we were at the home of uh, UPP chairman, Dr. Jokwa Zukore, he was also hammering on the same restructuring. What is your, what is your, uh, how do you think the restructuring could be well orchestrated and achieved? APC did a 419 in Nigeria Palace with Nigerians. That was what their cardinal program. Indeed, I supported the party on that platform. And all of a sudden, they lost it. It was a shadow of itself. And <laughs> you started seeing <laughs> bringing people from people who had no idea what they went to the market with. And then the, the, the tragedy was the president has has very short memory about why, why Nigeria or why Nigeria voted. And you turn around to punish those who did not support you. And then uh, it doesn't have the intellectual capacity to move the engine. That's the problem. 